Hello everyone, my name is Jenny Burak and I am an astrologer. I am an energy healer and teacher. I channel the energy of Archangel Metatron. Uh, someone had asked in the comments of my last YouTube video to explain who Metatron is. So Metatron means um, beyond the matrix, okay? He is an energy that's inextricably, as he says it, uh, connected in connection with uh, the energy of creation that we're all pieces of. If you go into the white light of creation, you'll see like shimmers of the iridescence, like pastel rainbow shimmering colors, and that is Metatron's energy. Uh, but he speaks to us all the time. He's within every one of us. It's just whether or not we choose to switch on, you know, switch, turn up the volume and pay attention. But he, like, brings synchronicity and the gifts, of, like, psychic gifts. And, you know, if you ask for the gifts of the Holy Spirit, because, because he's the, energy, the same energy as the Holy Spirit, um, then those gifts would come to you through him, like from the energy of creation, through him to you, he's the bridge energy, like between the energy of the Alpha and the Omega and all of us. Um, you know, it's all, you can always reach that energy. It's part of you. It lives inside of you, as does he and the energies of the Ascended Masters and Archangels. They're all like the higher octave of us because in essence, we're all a part of the light of creation. That's where we come from. Okay. So, uh, I hope that explains it a little bit better. Um, I also wanted to say thank you to everyone who left comments and sent emails and Facebook messages after what I shared in my last video. It was very nice to receive all of that and to feel so supportive and loved. So I appreciate all of that. So we're going to talk about the full moon lunar eclipse that we have coming on the 27th of July. Um, you know, this, this is uh, tricky because it really looks uh, rocky and it looks like collectively a lot, of, a lot of things are going to go down, which we know and we've been waiting for. Uh, this is when I feel like we're really going to start getting into uh, more serious, more serious aspects of things that maybe have been floating around. Uh, it is on a fixed star named Oculus, and I got this from the Astrology King. If you ever want to look up fixed stars, I use his website. There are a few websites that I, I, I don't remember the names of all of them right now. But Oculus is a great influence over human affairs, portending major areas such as climate and political customs. With an eclipse, it indicates major storms and, and uh, at sea. And then some other terms that I was given were catastrophe, collision, great upheaval, and distress. So... When, I mean, this is literally, it's four degrees and 43 minutes, so the eclipse is right on this fixed star. Uh, we already know that things politically, uh, at least in the UK and the United States, not so hot right now. Uh, he did have me pull the chart for the full moon with London time, so I'm going to talk a little bit about things happening um, for the UK, but that's also the universal time, so it you know, we can all take it, take like that chart would be applicable no matter where you live, pretty much. But I didn't look at it exactly with the United States. I've talked earlier about that this Mars South Node retrograde is happening from the South Node of the United States natal chart going all the way back to the Pluto of the United States. So we know that a lot of things are going to go down in reference to the United States. Uh, where this eclipse, this eclipse um, hits or affects like the, the western coast of the United States could be pretty significant. Could be because 
we don't know how when these energies are going to play out exactly. It's not going to be, it could be, but it's most likely not going to be that day. Um, but the Sabian symbol for the eclipse is a council of ancestors has been called to guide someone. And he showed me a very, like, intense, intense, broad um, light coming in, influx of light coming in. And what all of these eclipses are about, the one that we had with the new moon, this eclipse, and then the new moon that's coming on the 11th of August next month, they're all setting us all up. We are all, if you're awake at all, and if you're saying, okay, here I am, what, what, what am I going to do? Uh, what am I going to point my arrow? You know, I'm ready to start my mission, start my divine timing. All of us are shifting into a new divine timing come September. So also that, you know, that might not be like September 1st, we all get our marching orders kind of thing. But this will be when he's saying those energies will start to play out. Like they'll, they'll be like a sprout, okay? Of, oh, and you'll know like what direction, okay? That all begins in, in September for everyone. So... This Mars South Node, you know, conjunction and then the Mars retrograde with Mars being the ruler of Aries and Aries being the constellation that rules the first house, the house of self. These are, and you're talking about it in conjunction with the South Node. This is when we're releasing like old patterns and old, you know, ingrained things that are, ne things that are negative. Okay. Things that we want to. We want to release. We want to move away from. Okay, so the chart for the full moon, if you can see it there. So I'm just going to kind of do what I do with my clients and sessions. Uh, if you look into that third house in Aquarius, you can see the moon, Mars, and south node all clustered up right there with Lilith. That's black moon Lilith, a little moon with the cross at the bottom. Lilith carries the energy of the woman who refuses to be subservient, who knows that she's equal and isn't going to take, isn't going to put up with anything less than being treated as equal. I posted on my Facebook page the video of the waitress, and I'm not, you know, advocating for violence, obviously, okay, but the waitress who had a customer walk by, thankfully it was on camera, and he grabbed her. And he grabbed her, he reached like pretty much between her legs is what it looked like and grabbed her ass and she just took him down. I mean, she took him down and he was a big guy and she was really tiny. And um, anyway, it ended up he was arrested for sexual assault because it was on camera. So that was good. But that's Lilith. Okay. <laughs> that's Lilith in this mixture. She's not putting up with it anymore. Okay. And then we've got the sun. I'm going to make sure you can read that. Um, where it says Volca, that is Volcanus, okay? That's Volcano, Volcanus, some kind of eruption. With the North Node, which looks like a horseshoe, so where we're going, and then the diamond with the cross at the bottom, that is the energy of, she. that's Athena, Pallas, Athena, and she carries the energy of Pallas Athena, and Pallas Athena was a warrior, a female who was born of her father Jupiter's forehead. So, and she was like the balance of the masculine and the feminine within herself. Okay. She led her people. She was a great warrior. So that's where we're going. We're done with, you know, being told to be subservient, sit down. You know, I waitressed for a lot of years when I was very young and I can say it wasn't customers, but with the people that I worked with, I put up with that stuff all the time. Those days are gone. That's gone, which we know with all everything that's come up with the Me Too movement. But um, so that's what we're shifting out of. And we're shifting into this new age of, you know, masculine and feminine coming into balance. So if you look, take a look at, let's see, we've got, Saturn in Capricorn, and then Uranus, where this hand is over here. 
Saturn, Uranus, Chiron in, at the beginning of Aries. Okay. They're all speaking to this eclipse. Saturn and Uranus are... Uranus is actually Saturn's father, but Saturn and Uranus are both the rulers of Aquarius, and Saturn being the lord of karma, Uranus is the thing that frees us from our karma. So what Metatron was, and Chiron in Aries is, again, the wound of self or the lower masculine energies. We've all got them. We all came in as, as men, and we all participated in the patriarchy. So a lot of times when I do healing sessions, it's about something that we did as the patriarchy when we were that man that, um, you know, dominated and used force to get to get his way. Uh, that was that's part of the human condition that we're now healing. OK, all of us are collectively. And Chiron and Aries is about just that Uranus and Saturn. And what he was saying in relation to this full moon is that it's an unleashing he didn't say a release. He said an unleashing. So it's like unleashing us from that, you know, patriarchal, you better listen to me. I'm in charge, you know, and I, most of the healings that I've done have been in lifetimes when I was a man uh, who was dominant and authoritarian. So we've all got that inside of us and it's all coming up to be healed right now. That's what this Mars retrograde a lot of it is about, and all these other planets in retrograde. Retrogrades are always a time to release. We release. We release. So, um, you know, for collectively, we're talking about things going on at sea, um, climate change events, and then more political havoc is what he's saying right now. I wanted to show with the chart for... Um, for the UK, if you look into the 12th house, you see Jupiter, who looks like the number four, uh, in a very tight conjunction with Poseidon. And then in the second house of money, you see Saturn and, you know, Sphinx, Pholus, Cupido. Those are all speaking to, like, monetary issues. Um, and then in that... It's opposing, if you look at that second house, it goes up to an opposition with <laughs> union and vertex, union, Brexit, union and vertex being together like that. It's like a splitting apart. And it looks like there could be um, financial issues as a result. It looks that way in the astrology. Also, the 12th house is intercepted. So all of that water, um, Poseidon. And then Neptune is retrograde in the fourth house of home or country. The country that, in, obviously, in this case, we're talking about country. Um, Chiron and Aries and fire in the fourth house for England as well. Speaks to more drought. But it also speaks to there being, for the chart, the overall chart, speaks to there being a lot of water. Maybe an unnecessary amount of water, like a, he's saying deluge of water in some areas and then other areas having no water. So, you know, this is what he, he has been saying to me to keep reminding people that we didn't just want to come here at this time. We didn't just want to incarnate at this time. We insisted that we be here for all of these shifts and changes for the rise of the divine feminine. So, and the healing of the masculine. So that's what it looks like for collectively. It just, he showed me like a boat, like a rowboat kind of like being tossed and water coming in. So like I said, when we're talking about the patriarchy or issues of authority, um, cr crumbling, you know, as within, so without, as above, so below. What's happening astrologically and what's happening collectively is happening to, with each of us on an individual level. So this is about, you know, taking our authority back and our, using our gifts of creativity. However, that, that, I mean, it doesn't have to be crafting, for instance. That's something that I'm not very good at. Um, but, and a lot of us don't have talents like that. 
but there, there's something that you have that's unique to you. There's some gift that you have. And using your gifts of creativity, we're in Leo season right now, which is all about creativity. It's using something that you were given in order to free yourself, okay? And this unleashing is, you know, Uranus is not about the status quo. It's about something, some change, like something going and something being released in order to put you on the path where you can move forward without anything causing you to be tripped up or your energy going to maybe some, someone or something that, you know, you can't afford to be wasting your energy on anything right now. So if something does leave or there's some kind of eruption and a separation, then just know that that is for what is in your highest and best good. Um, a lot of this is going to be played out in relationships, though. So then July 30th, that's the 27th, and that happens at 3.20 in Chicago time, in Central Standard Time. So you can just adjust for your time zones. And again, that's a two, because we always look at the minutes uh, with moon events, not the hours, because those are different everywhere. But the minutes, two, that's about balance. So it's about bringing things into balance. And again, partnership, too. It highlights the partner partner equation that I was talking about. So July 30th, then, we'll have the Mercury, Mercury and the Sun both aspecting the planet Venus. Mercury will be in retrograde. Mercury goes into retrograde the 26th, the day before, and comes out of retrograde on the 19th of August. So that can be an aspect of creative, creative genius. For sure, with that Mercury, Venus, Sun energy, uh, and Mercury and the Sun being in Leo, uh, that can also be something to do with money because Mercury and Venus are both about money. Mercury being like mercantile exchange and you know trade. Um, the August first through the fourth, Mars and Uranus are going to square again. So the first time they squared, uh, I was telling that story about what happened with me in the middle of May. That was like the 14th, 15th of May that they squared the first time. So if anything was going on for you at that time, and then something that was playing out for all of us collectively, which I'm not that up on the news anymore. I try not to be. Um, you know, it could be, it's something that's coming back again. Mars is men too, by the way, but it's also like, you know, it can be anger it could be aggression. Um, but anyway, those two energies will square. And then they will square again in mid-September from September 16th to the 19th. So whatever is going on, just, you know, make a note. Like August 1st through the 4th, whatever issues come up to be looked at that, you know, if they haven't been taken care of by September 16th, then for sure they will, that will all that story will be played out and dealt with during that time. Uh, then, and they're also going to sextile. So that's a, a harmonious energy, uh, Chiron in Aries. So again, it's like the wound of the masculine, but the wound of self as well. And then August 5th, Mercury will make what's called a King Kunx to Pluto. That is an uncomfortable energy. I mean, aspect. So the way that those energies are talking to each other, it's not like a harm harmonious conversation. I really see a lot of this playing out with money because Pluto is in the sign of institutions and banking. So individually, we're going to want to watch our words. Mercury and Leo can know it all. Like I have a Leo moon, so I can say these things, but Leos do tend to, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say that planets in Leo, because we all, you know, have a sun, which is ruled by the constellation, or the sun is ruler of the constellation of Leo. So Leo is in everyone's chart. But planets in Leo can tend to know it all, and especially when you're talking about Mercury. And Mercury in retrograde can be obnoxious about thinking that he knows it all. So when he's in aspecting Pluto, we, that's when we're going to kind of just want to, you know, chill out and make sure that. You know, you're not taking in anything from anyone else who's having some sort of uh, Mercury-Pluto issue on the 5th. On the 7th, the Sun will square Jupiter as Venus moves into Libra. 
Venus rules Libra, so she'll be out of Virgo. She'll be free to get dressed up and feel pretty and do all the, you know, Venus likes pleasure. Venus wants happiness and pleasure. In Libra, she's looking to partner. Uh, but with that Sun square Jupiter having happening this, the exact same day, I would say that that's kind of like a maybe not like rushing into partnership energy just because a sun, a, a square is an uncomfortable aspect and Jupiter being like abundance and blessings and gifts when the sun is squaring it and you've got that energy happening as Venus moves in for her, you know, transit through, through uh, Libra, maybe not like the most optimal time to partner with someone, especially, and I, I don't care if it's um, for talking about two females, when Mars is with the South Node and all of this stuff is in retrograde and then the Sun squares Jupiter the same day that Venus moves into Libra, I would say just maybe hold off on becoming involved in like a full-blown relationship kind of thing because most likely it's not going to be something that's maybe for the best or that doesn't, doesn't last. You know, I mean, you can always learn from soulmates if you're okay with having like just a brief something. But if you're looking for like a long-term lasting relationship, this might not be the energy to get involved with someone new at least. Maybe with someone from the past, but even then, I don't know. That's, I, I wouldn't. Let's just say that. I wouldn't. But you do whatever you think is right for you. Obviously, we're all individually doing different things, so it could be that it's fine for you. Um, but then we'll have Venus when she moves into Libra. She'll immediately oppose Uranus in her sign of Taurus. So Venus and, and Libra are about balance, okay? And Uranus likes to like change and doesn't want restriction and wants to just move and shake things up. And Taurus is very like slow and, you know, likes pleasure and likes, and Venus is, or uh, Uranus is uncomfortable there. And then when they're in opposition, they're definitely having a significant conversation. Okay, and don't forget Uranus is ruling Mars right now, fire, as he goes through the constellation of Aquarius. He's also the ruler of that full moon that we're having as well. And then, um, then after she uh, opposes Uranus, she will immediately, um, the next day, she will make a King Kunx again, an uncomfortable energy. I'm sorry, you guys, she opposes Chiron, okay? She's opposing Chiron, so it's like the wound, okay? But then she'll King Kunx immediately Uranus. So that's what I was talking about, like things that are out of balance is with our value system collectively, and then like individually where we aren't being valued, there's going to be some kind of like an unleashing or you know, a releasing in order to bring you into a place of balance with, with how you're being valued, whether that's in relationship, in a job. Um, but Libra always represents the other that we partner with. Your partners aren't just romantic. Your partners are your friends. So any relationship that you have, if there's something, you know, that's not in balance, this would be a time when we're, you know, releasing those kind of relationships. After, right after she makes the aspect with Uranus, just a few hours later, then she will square Saturn. So, again, um, Saturn being the ancient ruler of Aquarius and Mars being in Aquarius, it just, and that brings us almost up, and that's like the day, just one more day then until, this will be during the buildup to the next eclipse, okay, for on the 11th. So... It just really like looking at, I didn't even write, I didn't even talk about like all of the aspects. There aren't that many like such significant aspects. It's just, there's a lot of aspects of tension and there's a lot of like that rocky boat, you know, energy that he was, that he was showing me. Um, so I said on my Facebook page that what I've been doing lately, just because I've had it reflected to me a lot around me. I was going to actually talk about one instance where I was in traffic and the woman, she did absolutely nothing wrong. And the man behind her, I just happened to be on the side coming in to merge. And he got really upset that she had let the car who had to merge into the lane or would have to be, drive off the road. I mean, there was, she, obviously she, she had to let the car in. That's what we do. 
we work together cooperatively to drive around on streets together. And he just planted his hand on the horn. And you know when someone does that, how everyone, everyone around in the cars, when all of a sudden there's just a really loud noise that goes on like that, it, it just, it's like friction in the energy. So I just like sent all of that to the light and I asked for, you know, peace and unconditional love for the man and then for the woman. That's a way to help with these energies when you see something like that. Um, but when you go into the shopping center, send unconditional love and peace through the shopping center. Uh, send it to all the people in the shopping center. Send unconditional love to all of the goods in the shopping center. Like These are things that make a difference. When you bring the light somewhere, and you're always safe, okay, in bringing the light somewhere. When you send unconditional love to anyone, nothing, can, nothing negative can happen to you. You're protected through the light of creation, through the energy of unconditional love every time that you do that. But I've also been sending the blue ray of peace through all of the waters in my body. So you just ask to send the blue ray through your body and you just watch it come in through your brain, the water in your brain, and you just watch it go all the way through your body. I'm telling you, it makes a huge difference right now with just the tension and stress and anxiety, you know, that's happening for everybody in the ethers is what he's saying. It just does a lot to dilute that and to get it out of your system. Um, yeah, I mean, and then this this new moon in Leo looks phenomenal. I mean, again, it's a big one. You know, it's like that new moon that we had with the eclipse last a couple of weeks ago. These are all big events uh, that, and, you know, we're getting ready to shift. And we know that creation comes about in a violent way a lot of times. I don't mean like war, but I'm talking about when, you know, lava, volcanoes, um, that's how we create life on earth. That's how lands are created. So in order to birth this new energy into the earth, it's not going to be like easy peasy, you know, a couple of years, things are uncomfortable. It, it's going to be like a massive shift and learning to live a different way on the earth than we have been. It's going to be awesome. We're moving to utopia. But um, yeah, it's all beginning now. Like it's all, all the stuff that's been happening and especially the way it's playing out in the United States, it's like, I, I feel like I'm living in a spoof half the time. He's been playing this song for me uh, for like, I don't know, it's been a while that he's been playing this song for me. But um, he's a big Beatles fan. I know Amanda mentioned that and I, I was going to tell her that um, I have the same thing with Beatles songs. But uh, so this is what he's been playing for me. I'm not singing it, by the way. I've already put the word out that that will not be happening. Um, but, uh, it's Blackbird. So, Blackbird fly, Blackbird fly, into the light of the dark black night. Blackbird singing in the dead of night, take these broken wings and learn to fly. All your life, you were, you were only waiting for this moment to arise. So, as all of these things are playing out collectively, we have all of this Plutonian energy you know, Pluto and Capricorn and all of the different aspects being made to it this month. Pluto rules the seeds in deep within the earth. And Pluto carries the energy of the phoenix rising from the ashes. Plant your seed. There's never a bad time. The energy of creation created the planets too, okay? They're not more powerful. Plant your seed. Decide what it is that you want to point your arrow at. And ask for all the help from your soul family and your guides that you can have. And then shoot your arrow. So I'm just going to keep talking about that through this eclipse season. Just to kind of alleviate like all the, you know, oh, um, that's out there. Because we're, we're ready for the shift, right? We're ready to stop this nonsense that's been happening for 2,000 or more, more years than that. Uh, we're all ready for a new dawn. And I wanted to share to one of my very close friends, She her Facebook page is called Shining Angels. She's in Italy, and she recently started painting the angels. They'll just come and, like, stand in front of her <laughs> until um, they're painted. So, anyway, her Facebook page is Shining Angels. And if you would like to schedule a session with me, 
I uh, go over like what's going on in the past in your natal chart. I will take you into the timelines. You know, time is not happening. It's not linear. Time is happening all at once. So it's easy just to pop into the timeline and witness what brought about your Saturn issues, like where you're restricted and blocked, where you feel thwarted in moving forward. That's your Saturn energies. Pluto is like, you know, depression and darkness. And anyway, we, we look at all of the those issues in the chart and Metatron will point out to me like which ones to work on first and then we just go from there. Um, my website is Astrology for Ascension and my Facebook page is also Astrology for Ascension. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions, you can email me at JennyB at AstrologyForAscension.com. Everyone, just remember to, you know, inhale the blue light of peace, witness it going through all of the waters in your body. We'll just continue to send unconditional love into the center of the earth and ask for, oh, ask for protection while you're driving. And if you're traveling at all, just because the energies are ripe for um, accidents. So I put like a buffer around my car too. All right, everybody, uh, take care, and I will talk to you in just a few days.